Okay, we're on page six in your packet, section 4.3. This is all about metals. This screencast is all about metals. Here we go. Physical properties. There's five important physical properties we're gonna mention involving metals. These are all vocab terms, at least some of them are. Okay, first one. And this is probably what you think of when you think of a metal, most people picture this. Number one, shininess, also called luster. Metals have luster, shininess. For example, gold, very shiny. Look at those guys. You almost needed sunglasses to look at those golden coins. Also, platinum's known for being shiny. And the shiniest of all, silver, AG. Okay, number two, the second physical property. We call this uh, materials that can be pounded into shapes without breaking. And that term is called malleability. So make sure you underline and add that that it's without breaking, without breaking. Okay, number three, materials that can be pulled out into a long wire. That's called ductility, ductility. Number four, the ability of an object to transfer heat or electricity to another object, starts with a C, and that's known as conductivity. The most conductive metal on the chart is silver. Now, of course, that's not used often because it's expensive, the most used and second best conductor is Cu, which of course stands for copper. Okay, moving on. All metals are solids. Every single metal on the chart are solid at room temperature, except for one special, unique, very interesting liquid metal called mercury. Notice mercury is a liquid, making it the only liquid metal on the chart at room temperature. Here's a cool picture of mercury. It's very dense. Mercury's density is around 13, so you can see that very heavy objects float on mercury. Here's a scientist handling mercury, which sh you shouldn't do that because mercury is a dangerous substance to breathe in. There's a guy sitting on mercury. You can see how dense mercury is. He can sit on mercury. His density is way less than mercury. Another cool picture. Okay, chemical properties. Number one is the ease and speed at which chemicals react, elements react with other elements, and that's called reactivity. And the second chemical property is the fact the gradual wearing away of a metal due to a chemical reaction, we call that corrosion. Corrosion. As noted above, uh, reactivity increases as you go towards the left and down a group. So group number one all the way down is the most reactive area of the chart. Okay, now if you look at the periodic table, you can see that if you look, there's a, a crooked line going down. It's almost like a staircase in black over here. Everything to the left are metals. So most of the chart, most of the periodic table will be metals. Now to the right of that line, these are the non-metals. Right on the line in red, metalloids. Okay, metals on the periodic table. Uh, group one is definitely my favorite group, the alkali metals. Those very interesting metals. Uh, they're the most reactive metals on the periodic table. If you look here, you can see they're group one. Group one. Hydrogen is not part of that group, but lithium, sodium, all the way down to francium. Okay, let's take a look at sodium here. You don't have to write anything. You can just check it out. Sodium is shiny, it's soft. As we go down the list, potassium looks very similar because elements in the same group look and act very similar. Here's potassium. Now as we go down the chart, down the period, it gets more and more reactive. As we go down the group, I should say, there's the next one, rubidium. You can see in water, it acts, reacts very violently. Okay, moving on to the next one, cesium. Okay, you can see cesium in water, okay, extremely violent. And the most reactive metal on the chart is francium or francium, and we can't get any francium. One, it's radioactive so it would be too dangerous to work with. And two, it's so reactive that it never occurs by itself. Whenever they find it, it's already reacted with something else in the compounds. Okay, moving along. Uh, group two. These are called the alkaline earth metals. Uh, the two most important and common alkaline earth metals, please write this down, are magnesium and calcium. Okay, those are the two very important alkaline earth metals. Both are essential elements to, to humans. There's a picture of magnesium being burned. You saw that earlier in the year. There we have a beautiful piece of calcium. Okay, now groups three to 12, the transition metals. You can see they're 
a large portion of the charter transition metals, and uh, please write this in. They include familiar metals such as gold, silver, copper, nickel, and other ones like mercury, tin. So these are important metals. There's a lot of them. They're very important. Okay, moving on to the lanthanides. Okay, these are found near the bottom. They actually belong in group three, but they, they're placed at the bottom. And these are also known as the rare earth elements. They're rarely found on the earth. Uh, they're very important with technologies, with all the new technologies. Um, rare earth elements are extremely important. Okay, moving on to the actinides. Actinides are found at the very bottom, the very bottom of the chart there, the actinides. Um, these are all radioactive, and after uranium, 93 through 103 are all man-made. They were made in a lab with particle accelerators, also called atom smashers. So these are the lanthanides, and they also all belong in this spot right by group three, but since we can't squeeze them all in there, we place them at the bottom so you can see them. Okay, well that concludes our talk with metals. If you want to learn more about metals, you can borrow that from me or, or you can purchase that at a bookstore or online. Great book talking about the history of the periodic table and a lot of interesting stories, true stories about metals. And that concludes our screencast. Great job and I thank you for listening.